the sixth annual, amazing that it's gotten that far, engineering design contest at Caltech. I'm delighted, though I must say, I guess a little not too surprised at the size of the crowd. We outgrew Baxter last year, and it looks like we didn't even last a whole year in Ramo. Uh, I'll explain a bit about, about what the contest is all about. The heart of engineering is doing design. It's where the rubber meets the road. It's where the fun is, I think, in engineering. Uh, lots of people have said things like the uh, uh, science is the, is the uh, study of the existing universe and engineering is the creation of new things. And I really enjoy creating new things. And I think you'll see the students this afternoon have done a great job and have enjoyed creating new things. This is a 10 week long class. The students at the beginning of that 10 weeks are given a bag of junk. Um, each student gets the same junk and they have to build a device. They're also given a sheaf of rules, and we have some copies here for those of you who haven't seen them that are interested in exactly what the device has to do. The end of 10 weeks, they've designed and built a device to come and compete, and they bring their machines out on today, as it turns out, to compete. Now, what's the contest like this year? Well, I think you can see pretty plainly, it's a string climbing contest. Each student's device has to sit in the rectangular, its own, his own rectangular starting area, goes over and gets a hold of the rope, and then climbs. They have to climb this rope, but the ropes are not stationary. There's a pulley at the top. Imagine an old-fashioned clothesline that's been turned vertically, okay? I've just attached a little, well, for the purposes of this discussion, let's call it a marker, and the first person to get to the top of his rope closes the switch and lights a light, okay? So that way we can tell who won. Now, <laughs> It also turns out that if nobody closes their switch in the 35 seconds they have, the tallest machine, the highest point of the highest machine, that machine wins. So some people have elected, as you'll see, to a strategy where they just uh, work on their opponent down on the deck, and then they might, <laughs> and then they might raise a flag at some time during the time that might stick up a half a meter or so. <laughs> Perfectly acceptable. Now. If this pulley system were just free running, one of the ways to defeat, defeat your opponent would be to never touch the rope. Because if he was trying to climb on the other side, no matter how fast he pulled, he wouldn't be able to lift himself up. <laughs> so to keep that from happening, we put a damper at the top, okay? So the damper keeps a weight so it falls fairly slowly. That's a one and a half kilogram weight, and it falls in about 15 seconds, okay? Uh, they have 30 seconds of power and five more seconds of settling time, as indicated by these lights. Okay, our, our, first, our first competitors are Atelier Rizal, Dave Parks, Gentlemen, are you ready? Set. Go. Ain't over yet. Hey, all right. Ready, set, go. Are you ready? Set. Go. Ready? Set. Go. Uh-oh.
Now that was truly wonderful. At MIT, they wouldn't have said anything. Larry just looked over at Jim's machine and said, Jim, it's still unplugged. Students at Caltech and Pasadena took part in a fascinating contest today. It was the annual engineering design competition, and students who came with their own inventions competed against each other. Now, this year, students were given identical materials and asked to build a string climbing device, a motorized unit that would climb up 11 feet. Some of the inventions worked better than others, but the organizers said winning was not the real objective. Most classes are taught primarily at, in a classroom with a lecture or the chalkboard, and this class is an opportunity for the students to get an experience in doing an open-ended kind of problem, one in which there isn't one right solution, one in which they can experience the pitfalls of solving real problems in the real world. He says the contest gives the students engineering experience, such as design, prototyping, and testing, and manufacturing. The contest winner was Mark Little, shown here with his winning entry. Let's see if we have a winning entry now in the weather. Any good news for us?